The problem with a system in which money is a standard commodity is that it is most efficient when only one standard commodity is used. But if you do that, it makes the value of money exclusively dependent on the quantity of that one commodity in relation to all other commodities. For example, the Spanish thought they would be fabulously wealthy with all the gold they stole from the Aztecs and the Incas and then turned into money back home. But when the gold got back to Europe, sure, the amount of gold increased, but it didn't increase real productivity in proportion. Fertilizer would have been more useful for that. So because there was no big increase in real stuff to buy with it, the value of gold decreased, and the Spaniards discovered that gold had no absolute money value in itself, as many people had imagined it would. Its value was determined by its abundance relative to the value of real goods and services to be bought. Yet many continue to argue that the value of gold, a luxury item of no practical use to most people, should be the measure of value for all the real goods and services essential to our lives. While some campaign for a return to gold, Others mistakenly believe that today's money still does represent gold held in a vault somewhere. That hasn't been true for decades. In our current money system, we use national fiat currencies and bank promises to pay in national currencies as the standard commodity instead of gold. National currencies used to be promises to pay in gold or silver, but way more promises were made than could be honored so that system fell apart. Today, national currency is just legally enforced money, what they call fiat money. That is, it's money you have to accept because the government says so. To many, this government fiat money is just worthless paper. But is it really? We can pay our taxes with it, and governments, especially local ones, provide essential services paid for with those taxes, like roads, schools, hospitals, libraries, police, and military. So government fiat money isn't worthless at all. Now it is true that consumers of government services have no individual free market choice as to what their tax money is spent on and what services they receive. In fact, many taxpayers may not want those services. So therefore, this money can rightly be accused of being monopolistic, coercive, and socialist. But government is coercive, monopolistic, and socialist by nature, isn't it? What else should it be? Government in a democracy or a republic is ideally a single authority, empowered by society to enforce laws agreed upon by society for its own collective benefit. In a free market economy, government must provide the level playing field of law within which the free market can function, and it also has to provide the referees to enforce the rules of the game. Those who are nostalgic for the freedom of the frontier should recall that the first thing early settlers usually did was elect a sheriff and build a jail and collect taxes to pay for both, for good reason. So government fiat money isn't inherently worthless by nature. Governments at all levels offer vital services in exchange for it. It only becomes worthless when government creates too much of it which it often does, and for the worst reasons. While many reformers are fixated on the differences between gold and fiat currency, what's more important is the essential similarity. Being single, uniform commodities, gold, silver, national currencies, and bank credit, all share the characteristic common to monies for millennia past. The more money there is, relative to the real things available to buy, the less the money unit is worth. Thus the total quantity of money in circulation is extremely important to maintaining the general price levels. And today this quantity is largely determined by the demand for new money to purchase real estate and speculative equities. 
This makes the supply of money for general trade particularly vulnerable to real estate and stock market bubbles.